Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. We're introducing um, grouped frequency tables and histograms, frequency histograms and polygons, and cumulative frequency histograms and polygons, or OGIVs, or OGIVs, whatever you would like to call it. Um, alrighty, so look, this isn't a particularly fun topic for me, but certainly uh, we need to be um, enthused by it because we have to do it, don't we? Um, look, you've done this before, pretty much oh, for, for many years. Um, you've done this since year seven. Um, so I'm going to look at a frequency table to start off with. Often we have the score, first of all, X. And we have our frequency column, hence why they're called frequency tables. Um, sometimes, but this is in yellow, not all the time, you might have an FX column. And sometimes you might have a CF column. Of course, too, you might have a tally column before the frequency, but often we don't. Now, for the most part, we have used previously single data like this and often then you're given the, the frequency like 2, 5, 7, 2, um, 1 for example and then you're asked to complete the table. So again this is refresh FX that means frequency multiplied by the score column so again that's because we're looking for you are using this for the mean and looking at how, what the total scores are going to be now if I've got two lots of one so two scores of one which means one comma one that means I've got two um, if I've got five scores of two so one two three four five now that's going to be ten added together twenty one eight and five um, my frequency total in this case would be 2 plus 5 is 7, 14, 15, 16, 17. And then my total of my FX column will be uh, 2 plus 10 is 12, um, 13, 23, 33, uh, 41, 46. Now, can you remember what your CF column is? Well, hopefully you remember CF means cumulative frequency. It should be a double M there, my apologies. Um, cumulative frequency which means that we accumulate the frequency column so we've got two to start off with then we add the next one that makes seven add the next one makes 14 and the next one makes 16 Add the next one we get 17 and you might remember that the total of the frequency column will be the same as the last number in the cumulative frequency and that's pretty much most of the stuff that you've done this year and then off that you answer things like the mean um, the mode the median and the range and it's probably not a bad idea for us to quickly go through that um, the mean is how um, you add up all the scores and then divide by how many scores there were and that's the whole reason why you do an FX column um, you might remember it looking like this the sum of the FX column divided by the sum of the frequency column so in this case it'd be 46 divided by 17 what Whatever the answer that's going to be. Um, the mode is the most common. So in this case, um, seven has occurred seven times, therefore three is the most common number. Um, the median is what we use the CF column for. Okay, um, or obviously drawing a graph as well, but it's a middle number. Now if I've got 17 numbers, that basically means I've got six, uh, no sorry, I've got eight numbers then one number, then eight numbers. So you think about your numbers all together. I've got 17 of them. Um, therefore, that middle number, in this case, is my ninth number. Now, where's your ninth number occur? Well, this is my first two numbers. This is the first seven numbers. So the eighth number to 14th number occurs here. Therefore, it's in that column there, which is three again. And then the range is the highest score. Subtract the lowest score, which equals four. Okay, so I will go through that uh, again for the next lesson, but this lesson we're mostly dealing with how to draw a histogram and polygon. So what are the two differences? Well, a frequency histogram and polygon uses the score and the frequency column, whereas a cumulative frequency histogram and polygon would use the score column and the cumulative frequency. And you might remember, I guess, if you're looking for a frequency histogram, it kind of looks like this where it's just sort of all randomized, whereas a CF um, histogram and polygon will look like this, and it just keeps on going up. And the um, histogram part, so the polygon part, you know, if it's just the frequency, so normal frequency, you put the dots in the middle and then draw the lines together. Hopefully that's still making a bit of sense and remembering this, but for the cumulative frequency polygon or the OGIVE, 
it goes like that. So making sure there are no gaps in between. We always have a gap at the front of the uh, of the graph. Obviously, label the axes as scores and frequencies or cumulative frequency, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So hopefully, that's kind of jogging your memory a little bit. So let's have a look at a question now. Some of the stuff that we'll be dealing with today, it's dealing with it's a bit more challenging because what we're dealing with is group data. What's the difference between group data? Well, instead of having single numbers, um, you know, if I had to group put these scores into a frequency histogram, imagine having to include every single score from like 155 all the way up to what's the highest number here, like 189. You know, that's a lot of numbers having that in my score column. So what we might do is use um, a grouped or a class, um, a class data or group data. Um, what's the problem that's going to be there? That when I kind of do my FX column later on, and you imagine your FX column is your F times your score, let's just say, for example, I mean, it's saying go from, actually, I'll put that as 171, sorry. And for my first class, for example, here is going to be, I think my last number is 155. So um, let's say I'm going from 151 to 155, 156 to 160, 161 to 165, 166 to 170, uh, 170, 171 to 175, 176 to 180, and then 181 to 185, then 186 to 190. Okay, so let's say for example, you know, I've got five in here. If I'm trying to do my FX column, I've got no one score to multiply it by. So what we need to use, hopefully you remember, is that thing called the class center, which is halfway between here. So in this case, it'd be 153. Um, that would be 158, 163, 168, 173, 178, 183, and 188. So now when I did my scores, I can do my frequency times my class center. And it's an approximation, because obviously, you know, I could have had five lots of 151s or 555s, not 153. So it's an approximation. Okay, so this is looking at my table here. Um, I now need to do my tallies. Um, so let's have a look for anything between 151 and 155. I'm going to pause this. I'm going to do the answers. Otherwise, it's going to take too much time. Okay, so that should be my numbers. Um, it's not a probably bad idea to do a tally column as well for these ones because there's so many numbers, it's so easy to forget. I'm just going to double count these. 2, 4, 8, 16, 22, 27, 34, 36. So I'm just going to move this screen up a bit. So that's 36. That's my total. Um, and I'm just going to double check. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36. That's excellent. Okay, and all I would do now for my FX column is I'd simply multiply my frequency with my CC, 2 times 158, 4 times 763, add them all up, divide them by whatever I need to do if it was for the mean, etc. Now, if I was to draw a uh, histogram, what you would do is this. So, um, Start off here, and that's going to be 151, 155, and then I've got 161, 165, 171, etc., etc. And when I'm doing this, if I was doing two, so this is my frequency will be up here, so two, four, six, eight. 10, etc., etc. I now, because it's grouped data, this is the only difference when I'm doing it. You can see my numbers are actually between, not in the middle of. Um, and so you can see that between 151 and 155, I've gone up to between 155, um, well, 156, I guess, and 160. Okay, we're going to go up to then the next one. We're going to be going up four. The next one, up eight. Etc. The next one will be six. 
and then five, etc., etc. And you can sort of see where we're going. If I was doing my actual polygon part, that's where I would put the dots in the center and then start it off and then join the dots in the center. And then my last one, when it was my last one, I finish it off there. Um, obviously, doing it on here is a bit more challenging because I don't have a ruler and those sorts of things. Um, okay, the next one, we're going to construct a group frequency table to represent this data. Okay, use five classes. So I'm only going to do parts of this, guys. You might want to pause it and have a crack at this question and sort of see how we go. So I'm going to put my class here. Uh, I'm going to put a tally. I'm going to put a, actually I'm going to do a class center, sorry. So class, I'm going to do class center. Then I'm going to do a tally. Then I'm going to do frequency. Um, and it doesn't really ask for it much else, but except it does ask for cumulative frequency. So I'm going to do a CF column. Now, it hasn't specified what classes to use. In an exam, once again, it's very usual that it would. But again, what I'm looking through here is for my lowest scores. Um, I'm not seeing much here below 10. I can see 10 here. There's no single digits. Um, so what I might do is do, um, let's say, uh, 10 to f uh, 15. Then do 16 to... Now I'm going to change that slightly, folks. Um, I'm going to do 10 to 14, and then do 15 to 19, 20 to 24, and then use 25 to 29, and I'm going to do 30 to 34. And looking at there, there's definitely nothing above that. Um, Again, look at there, I mean, 25, realistically, there's not much above 25. So you might use smaller groups, but, you know, for this sake, I've used those five. You might do slightly different ones. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I might do my class centers. Um, I've chosen nice even numbers there, so that's going to be, well, for those first two, so that's going to be 12. Between that was going to be 17. Um, 22, 27, and then uh, 32. Now my tallies, again, because I've got so many numbers, it's probably not a bad idea to do a tally. What I mean by that is, you know, 11, so it's going to be one in there, 16, one in there, 17, one in here. I'm going to pause it and go for the rest of it out. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Um, I'm not going to bother doing, I'm only going to do two lines and then do my answers from there. Uh, my apologies if you've gone forward and done the rest of them, but just make sure, otherwise this is going to take me too long. Um, okay, so here we've got um, frequency of eight, then we've got 15, and then we've got seven. Um, I've got zero for the other ones there. So again, it's probably better to have used smaller um, groups, but that's okay. Now my cumulative frequency in this case will be eight plus 15 is 23 plus uh, 7 is 30, and that makes sense. I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. So I haven't missed any. You'd probably have double that, 60. Okay. Um, now it says here construct a group uh, frequency table to represent the data. We've done that. Insert a cumulative frequency column. We've done that. I'm going to tick and tick. Construct a cumulative frequency histogram. All right, so I'm going to draw my little histogram here. Okay, this is going to be representative. Uh, won't be dead exact. So I've got 10. And then I've got 14, then I've got uh, 19, 24, uh, 29. Then my frequency, it's cumulative frequency, I think. Oh, it's, oh, it's, yeah, it's cumulative frequency, so that's going to go up to um, 30 for my case. 5, 10, 15, 20. Obviously, yours would go up by the correct amount, up to 60. I'm just going to do mine from there. I'm going to put CF there. I'm going to put my class here or my score X. And then I can put my numbers in, which obviously will be slightly different to yours. So between 10 to 14, we've got 12. 
um, between 14 to 19 I've got 17, 19 to uh, 20 to 24 we've got 22, 24 to 29 um, I've got 0 and then 0. Um, again, you can see mine's going from small to bigger. Um, that's the histogram, the polygon or the ogive or ogive, depending on what you want to call it, would look like this. Done. Okay. And how many days did this store sell 21 or fewer televisions? Um, you know, again, what I'll be looking at through here is 21. Um, Okay, so I'm just going to 21, which is about there. Again, yours will be more accurate, come through, and I can read off my graph. Okay, um, again, because it's group data, these numbers in between are important. Um, they certainly be, are representative, and so that's why I guess we could call it continuous data. We go through, and then we go up and go across and read off the graph. Um, look, I'm sorry, it's a little bit rushed. Uh, I might try to do another separate one, which is a bit more uh, informative, but I think it kind of gives you the idea and enough information because you have done this in the past. It is revision. Um, if it is confusing, please let me know. I will make some more lessons on this. Um, but yeah, just got to bear with it. Grip your teeth and uh, sort of uh, just get, get as many questions as you can possible. Okay. And they're not particularly common HSC questions to come about. Um, but certainly if they do come up, we need to be able to answer them. Have an awesome day.